All right, welcome back to Lane Switching. Today, I'm in here, we're in here for the second time now with a YouTuber, and I got a West End YouTuber, I got the great Jay. Thanks for being here today, Sweet, man. Thanks for having me. I see yeah. what you're doing to the city, for the city. No Appreciate worries, it. man, no worries. Uh, so let's start it off, let's talk about your story, let's talk about your upbringing, you know? All right, so life. I started off, like I grew up in Lower Town of the East End, and then after that, I lived there for like eight years, a long time of my life. Then I moved to the West, I lived next to Richie, not in Richie, but I lived in like Penny. Mm. Lived there for a couple of years, and then recently I just moved to Barhaven. Okay, okay, fair enough. Yeah. And uh, now, what grade are you in? I'm in grade twelve. Okay, okay, yeah, so yeah. just wrapping it up. Just wrapping, wrapping it up, up. Yeah. Do you um, think uh, post uh, post high school, you think you're gonna stay in Ottawa or just? I like the thing about Ottawa is like I like Ottawa. Don't get me wrong; it's a very good city, but I don't feel like there's a lot of opportunity here. You know, like. If I go to Toronto, if I go to the States, I could collab with more YouTubers and just get more things done and, you know, that benefit me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. And it's true. Like, at the end of the day, there's very few content creators in the city. So it's like, if you want to broaden your horizons, you know, it's good to step out of your comfort zone and maybe travel to another city. But uh, let's talk about why you became an influencer. Like, when did it start and uh, why did you want to get into it? So ever since I was like a little kid, I was doing like you little YouTube videos like on my phone, on my tablet. Um, I started in like grade four, but I never took it like seriously. But in grade four, I just had my iPad. I started recording myself. And what made me start is like I was just watching other YouTubers and I just got inspired like Pretty Boy Fredo, uh, KSI, JJ, uh, what's it called? Deji. They all inspired me, you know? Yeah. And do you think like those guys, I mean, Pretty Boy Fredo, I think he's done a little bit of prank shit, but like KSI, Deji, those more like they started on FIFA, kind of did like shit around the house with their, their family and stuff. Was it ever pre now you're kind of doing the prank content? Was it ever like initially you were interested in pranks or just initially it was something Not, else? So initially I didn't want to do pranks. Initially I was doing like vlogs. I was doing reaction videos, public interviews. I never really got into the prank stuff until like later on, you know? And yeah. And why was it? So when and why did you start doing prank content? I started pranks very recently, actually, like this couple of, this month, I started doing pranks like that. And uh, I started doing it because I feel like it gets the most views and I enjoy doing it the most. Like, it's actually fun. My other content, I didn't enjoy it as much. This content, it's actually like fun to go in public and just fuck around. Do you find that uh, your sole purpose not sole purpose but like why you make content do you think it's totally motivated by numbers or do you think like this is an actual passion for you this is something it's you... an actual passion but i'm not gonna lie because a lot of people will lie it's an actual passion but i'm doing it more for the money and more for the clout if there was no money or clout involved i wouldn't be doing it i'm not gonna lie but it's for i, I enjoy doing it as well you know and uh it's different for everyone but like how would you define clout what is clout to you clout for me is like numbers views recognition and like when it comes to, I guess, whatever, garnering attention online, like what do you think are maybe like the negatives? Like what do you think that like maybe like, not if this doesn't work out, but like when you're trying to turn this into a business, when you're trying to make this serious, because at the end of the day, it's like if you want to continue this for, you know, long term, like how is it going to be a thing where it's like now you're kind of in that juvenile stage, just fucking around, having fun. How are you going to flip this shit into like some real business? So how am I going to flip uh, YouTube into some real business? Yeah, what are you doing now? Um, I'm just going to have to like keep just grinding, you know, just keep grinding. Fair enough. Fair enough. And uh, when was the first prank video you did? My first prank video I ever did would probably... Because I started a mad recent and I'm... Uh, probably... I don't know. I, f I think it's this month, probably, to be honest. And what was that prank? It was uh, shopping out of people's cart. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. My nigga Grimsy. Shout out Grimsy. And do you, like, when you're in those, because obviously they're, like, in public and shit, like, is it ever a thing where it's, like, like, is all, like, no holes bar? Like, you're gonna, like, fuck around with whoever and wherever, or it's just kind of like, ah, maybe not that person. Ah, that person looks like it'd be funny to do something, like, where, yeah, where do you lie. get that? You sometimes know? I hold back and I get scared because the guy kind of looks big and scary. So, so so sometimes I'm like, okay, yeah, let's not do this guy. But like most of the time I'm doing whoever. Yeah, yeah. And like I've seen, obviously, you've had some interactions with some uh, like employees type yeah. shit, like all that kind of stuff. 
where does it get to a point where you're like, you know what I mean? Like, has it ever gone to a point where police get involved or you're just kind of like in and out and you don't got to worry about that? Sometimes the police get involved. One time I got arrested, but most of the time police don't get involved. Police got involved once. Most of the time they just kick me out and I leave. If I stay in the store, then they could call the cops. But I'm usually like doing the pranks and then I'm gone. Mm, fair enough. Fair enough. And like... When you're thinking of an idea of a prank, when you're thinking, are these, obviously you're going to like take a little bit of inspiration from others, but like where are these ideas coming from? Like I see you've done the fake employee prank too. That's obviously been done a few times yeah. now. Like kind of how do you pick and choose like what type of pranks you're doing? So my inspirations for like pranks and stuff are probably like Jadeon, Loaf. They're all American content creators, but they go hard and you know, I get inspired by them. For sure. For sure. And, um... You know, right now, obviously, you're doing pranks. Before, you weren't doing pranks. Do you still, like, do you see, like, while you're doing pranks, doing other related content outside of pranks? So, right now, I'm doing pranks, but I don't see myself doing pranks forever. I'm only doing pranks right now to gain a following because that's, like, the fastest way to gain a following and the most fun way to gain a following. Once I gain my following, once I get, like, 100K, you know, once I gain like a lot of subscribers and stuff like that, I'm going to switch my content up for sure. I don't see myself doing pranks forever. That's fair. That's fair. And, um, you know, when you're on camera, like a lot of times for me right now in this setting, it's just like outside of this, like I might be like a little bit happier, a little bit goofier and shit. Cause it's like right now I'm trying to be a little serious and, you know, have a good conversation and have a good interview. And I want the audience to like that. Right. But when you're on camera, do you find in any way it's like, is it totally authentically yourself or do you maybe put on a little bit of character? Because even you see guys like I show speed and you see like those like clips of, oh, speed breaks character type shit. You know what I mean? So is that ever a thing for you where you feel like you're when you know, I'm doing my prank videos, I'm the exact same. But for like a setting like this, an interview, I'm like trying to act more professional. But when I do my pranks. I'm acting the exact same thing. Even without the cameras, I'm still trolling in public, just fucking around in public. But when I'm in a setting like this, like an interview or something, I try to be a bit professional and like, you know? Fair enough, yeah. fair enough. And um, where did that come from? Like, where did that energy come from? Where, like, what got you into being like a troll and shit? I just like, these YouTubers were just funny. I seen them fucking around. It's just, you know, maybe you just want to fuck around. It's just funny. And was it ever something like with your homies and shit where it's just like, yeah, you exactly. were doing this, yeah. been doing this? Been doing this, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was kind of like, what was it like, like Nicky Nicky Nine Door or whatever? Like, what exactly. was kind of like oh, the yeah, so, you original know, way of getting into it? Yeah, so you know uh, KK Two Times? You interviewed them before, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The like, actually, Kings. I forgot. My first pranks were kind of well done like a couple years ago. We used to do like Ding Dong Ditch videos, just videos in like Ikea and stuff like that. And yeah. And has it always like that was always kind of where you wanted to go was like the... The fucking around with the employees and shit like that. Yeah, I always wanted to do it, but I wasn't always doing content like that because pranks weren't always getting me views. At one point, I was reacting to people, you know? And uh, you had mentioned off screen or off screen, off camera, you were talking about uh, you had a page that had 25,000. When it ended up happening to that page? So yeah, I had a channel. Most of you guys probably know me from that channel. I had 25K subscribers. Everyone was posting me. It, it got a lot of clout. But the thing is, I built a community that liked because I was reacting to like TikTokers like Charlie D'Amelio, Dixie D'Amelio and stuff like that. And I built a community that loved me for reacting for those videos. So the problem was when I did content that wasn't like, my bad. When I did con that, content that wasn't reacting to these TikTokers, I wouldn't get views. So I just had to stop because content like that wasn't making me happy. You know what I mean? Mm, fair enough. And is it just like, like doing reaction videos, like what was there ever a part where it was an enjoyment or it was just something to build your brand, build the name? Nah, cause I seen, yeah, it was to build my brand, build my name. Cause I seen this other YouTuber in Ottawa. His name was tabs. He kept reacting to these like TikTok YouTubers and he, his channel was going insane. So then my friend, his name is Grimsley. He was like, Oh, we should also react to these TikTok, uh, TikTok stars. We're going to go up. So then I listened to him. We started reacting to these TikTok stars and our channel skyrocketed. But the only downfall of that is our viewers only liked us for reacting to what they subscribed us to react to, right? So when we switched up our content, we weren't getting the same views, which I'm like, if I'm not getting a lot of views with the amount of subscribers I have, let me delete it, restart, and just change up my content. Fair enough. Did you ever think maybe just to keep that page, keep doing reactions, to keep like a steady flow of views and shit, and then maybe like almost like oh, it's the second channel to do the prank shit? True, true, true. I actually thought of that, but like I didn't 
think of that. But when I deleted it, I started thinking about that and I kind of like regret deleting the channel, you know, but you know, right now I'm still going up very fast. I hit 500 subscribers in a month. You know, I'm still going crazy. So it's like, most definitely, most grinding. definitely. And, um, you know, now that you're doing, you know, more public stuff, more public, uh, content, what do you think is too far for the views for the clout? So what's too far would probably be, I don't think there's like, I can't think of any limits. I won't, I wouldn't like get someone fired or like, you know, if the police come, I'm going to respect the police officers and stuff. If they tell me to like, if the police come, of course, I'm going to respect the authority. So I think like disrespecting like officers and stuff like that, I feel like that's a little bit too far. You should show some respect to officers. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah. And I mean, again, like it's, it's kind of like a thing where it's just for me, when I kind of see the type of content you make, or I guess for me, someone I saw who was making similar content with Nell and the reason why it's like, maybe people get mad at it and stuff. But at the end of the day, it's like the, these employees are messing with, if they don't give you attention, you're not going to get a good video. Exactly. So if you don't get a good video, people aren't going to film you. That's facts. Cause when I'm filming and stuff and nobody's giving me a reaction, they're just ignoring me. We go on to another person cause we're not getting content. The only time we keep recording is when someone's giving us a reaction and start, starts getting cheese and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, that one, I think it was an a and fake employee yeah. prank. When you go into those settings, like, obviously the cameras are like, you edit it and shit, right? But like, what's that initial moment like where you're kind of like, what do you do to like sneak in, to like get in, to like, you know, make these videos? How do I sneak in? So like for the fake and do it, uh, employee prank in particular, my cameraman goes in first with a backpack on. And he has a camera in his backpack. He sits down for like three minutes. So they don't know that I'm with them. And then he'll pull out the camera. And then he'll record in like a secret position. And then I'll walk in. And then I'll start fucking around. So they won't uh, think that we're together. You know? Okay, okay. And for those, like, I think one guy like was like pushing you and shit. Trying <laughs> to get you out and shit. Yeah, that guy. Like, how do you feel in those situations? Or is it just kind of like funny shit? Like For, for me, it's just funny. Because he won't put, like, he won't, like, for me, it's just funny, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm not scared of any, anything happening. For sure, for sure. And, um, you know, with your channel, like, do you ever see yourself maybe doing merchandise, maybe doing stuff that is more, I guess, actually, you know what, like something that would, like, include other creators? Because there's other Ottawa creators, not many, but, like, would you ever see yourself collabing in the future with yeah, other Ottawa creators? Yeah, and 100%. I want Ottawa to do that more, right? Like, in Ottawa, you don't see, like, a lot of rappers and a lot of YouTubers collaborating with each other. I want a lot of, like, rappers and YouTubers coming together and just, like, making content together, like, pranks, whether it be pranks, streams together. I just want to see rappers and YouTubers just come together in the city and just go crazy. For sure. And you just talked about streaming. Uh, is that something in the books? Do you think you'll ever do that one day? Yeah, 100%. Like, I don't want to start streaming now. But when I build like a following on YouTube, I'm going to guarantee to get started with streaming. For sure. For sure. And uh, do you ever almost even see yourself uh, building something like Amp, like uh, Kaisen Ad and those guys? 100%. Actually, I'm in a content creating group right now. It's called AFT. Aim for the top. It consists of like three members, I think. It's me, my friend Grimsy, and NC Zane. You're gonna, they're in Ottawa. You guys are going to hear about them in like a couple months. They're going to go crazy. That's sick. That's sick. And uh, they have platforms as well? Uh, Yeah. NC Zane does, but my other, one of them do. Okay, okay, sick, sick. So, for the rest of this year, what can we expect from Jay? From the rest of this year, you're going to expect, you should expect pranks. And just pranks on top of pranks on top of pranks. Just get ready to, you know, get entertained by pranks. That's sick. And when you go to uploading, is it like, we can expect once a week, we expect twice a week. You once expect two once weeks? a week or twice a week. Yo, expect once a week, because guaranteed I'm going to have a video out once a week, but I'm going to try to aim for twice a week, because it's hard with school and stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. And so for the people, where can they find you on social media? They can find me on YouTube, The Great J, Instagram, The Great J, Snapchat, PSP Jaden, and yeah. And just all like The Great J, like no like extra letters, like T-H-E-G-R-E-A-T-J-A-Y? Yeah, so on YouTube, The Great J, on Instagram, The Great J with five Y's. Okay, okay. Sick. Sick. Man, I appreciate you sitting down. Appreciate you having this conversation. It was a sick conversation. You know, hope the best for everything. Hope the best Thanks. for the content coming soon, bro. That was the great Jay interview. That's my guy, Jay. I'm DF2. Peace, y'all. <laughs>